There are pictures projected inside your mind, sparkled by lines that you read. If these pictures are inspired by those lines, or if your mind simply connects them through your memories, is not clear. The story of Hardboiled Wonderland and the End of the World starts in 1985, in Tokyo. Tokyo is a light in the darkness, a shimmering city with a glossy nightlife. People dance and enjoy endless parties, lose themselves in music and spend their money for taxis during the economic bubble. But beneath this monster of a city, an underground war shakes the life of a lonely, still satisfied man our nameless main character. He is invited to visit the underworld of Tokyo and has to take the road of an endless cave, located just miles under the mega city. His path leads through a dangerous darkness that is the home of the so-called Inklings. These underground beasts are entities that have their own culture and eat humans. At the end of the road, a scientist is waiting for our hero. And slowly the story starts to emerge. Our protagonist is working as a so-called Calcutech. He is simply a human computer, hiding confidential data for the government inside his head. He washes data and again encrypts it by his subconsciousness. His enemies? So-called Semiotechs. They are fallen ex-Calcutechs and work for the factory. Their job? Stealing data from the Calcutech. The Calcutech is invited by an old scientist who is hiding in the Tokyo underground. He practices so-called sound removal, the next step of communication. In his words, sound is unnecessary to human evolution. Sound shall be replaced by telepathic skills. His method? using unicorn skulls to read old memories. What our narrator does not know is that the scientist has a connection to him. The scientist has been working for the factory and invented a method to read the subconscious Calcutex. He then edited the images inside the Calcutex mind into a fictional world inside his head. This place is called the End of the World. The End of the World is a winter wonderland, a calm and peaceful world. Everything here seems to be in total harmony. No wars, no stress. Only nature and humans. Even if it hints that the world here is medieval, people use normal technology. At least the technologies we knew back in the 80s. The people here seem to love their work. They are calm and peaceful. Even the unicorns that live here have that special aura and help our narrator to find peace. But behind every perfection there is a darkness you can't see. Once you enter the end of the world, you have to cut off your shadow. But your shadow does not simply die. Your shadow keeps your memory of your former life together. But the more time the shadow spends at the end of the world, the weaker he gets. He is allowed to talk to the body from time to time, but is treated badly under constant supervision. And what is any human without memory? Maybe the human feels better when he meets other people. 
people that have no emotion and live in peace and harmony. Having no emotions means having no anger or disappointment. But having no emotions also means having no love or good feelings. Financial happiness, a good job, or memories we can keep and love we receive. But what if we are caught in this world? What if we are doomed to spend the rest of our life here together? Our narrator has such a fate. He is the poor result of the scientist's experiment that has gone wrong and has a few hours left only until his mind will leave him. On the other side, we have the narrator at the end of the world who is torn apart between his decision whether to stay in this perfect world or if he should listen to his shadow who speaks out Murakami's hidden criticism on Japan's society during that times, which says, The people of the city paid for this perfection with their souls, and by losing the soul, everyone is stuck in infinitely prolonged time. But how will our narrator decide? To understand this, we need to understand who he is. And by being nameless to us, we have a call distance to him. Do we care about him? We do. Do we love him? We don't. But still, who is our narrator? To me, he is Johnny Mnemonic. Not Neo, as you may think here. Johnny Mnemonic. A book from 1981, which in Murakami's own words was not an inspiration to him. This movie has been released in 1995 and is maybe a predecessor of The Matrix. Johnny carries a storage device with sensitive data inside his brain. His price for this was the loss of his childhood memories. Combine this with Neo a few years later and you will see how heavy the influence of Hardboiled Wonderland and the end of the world is. A decision between perfection and love. It's all about fiction. The only world that matters is the one in here. Why? What validates and makes your fictions real? Feelings. And the other pictures? Well, for me, this is the gatekeeper from the end of the world. Here we have a mind reader. Another protector of the government on a hyperbrain level. And the great watchtower from the end of the world. Is Murakami maybe the scientist that implements these images in my head? Or did he initially implement them inside the minds of the producers that released these films? Or are we maybe caught in the world, or better to say the dreams he has created for us, and maybe the borders just blur and we can't differ anymore? In any case, I loved Hardboiled Wonderland and the End of the World, even if I had hard access on this book. It took me three attempts to finish the first 50 pages. It is possible that my brain was blocked through the extensive descriptions of this perfect nature. While I at first enjoyed the chapters that were set in Tokyo more, this drastically changed after the first half of the book, and I started to love the end of the world more. Murakami managed to change his writing style in such a masterful way that I, just as the narrator, gave up my shadow and didn't want to leave this perfect world. But in the end, emotionally driven passages that finally touched my soul started to take over and led me back to reality. That is, in the end, the imperfect perfection of Hardboiled Wonderland and the end of the world.